Hey guys what if Naruto and Kateria had a secret baby in DXD World Movie? Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Up on the tip of the clock tower belonging to Kuo Academy. A male figure wearing a single black leather hooded coat with the hood covering the face completely. Adorned with a silver zipper and seemingly pointless silver beaded pull strings for the hood that forms a semicircle in the center. Along with a pair of black pants, knee-high silver trimmed boots. Short black leather gloves that ends at the wrist, he watched as Magician was attacking the three faction meeting and teleporting frozen enemies back to their respected domain, the only reason he came here was because he heard from variant sources that a group known as the Chaos Brigade will make their existence officially be known. The hooded man didn't expect to cross path again with the forbidden Buller view, he faced against the last wielder to learn how to freeze time by his own means. Soon enough the wielder of the divine dividing came into the field, she was beautiful for her age with sky blue eyes and long white silver hair, she wore a jacket like trench coat with blue button up shirt and a black skirt with combat boot style heels, with a pendant gemstone with red ribbons around her neck, here we go. Balance break. The girl shouted as she soon was enveloped in a blue light, she is now wearing a white dragon-like armor with black skin-tight mesh bodysuit that showed her curvy frame along with her nice-shaped ass and D-cup breast, with several blue orbs located on her chestplate, gauntlet, greaves and pauldron, and the signature blue energy wings with white dragon-like extensions, vanishing dragon, balance breaker. When she was finally done the magician all attacked her at once, however she simply blocked all of their attacks like it was nothing with blue magic circles, HMPH. The girl concentrated energy into her left arm and releasing a surge of lightning which was able to eliminate the first wave of magicians, soon enough a second wave came through the giant summoning circle that was in the sky. Impressive, I can tell she is still holding back against these magicians, she may become stronger than her predecessors, said the mystery man, he has met and fought with the past wielders of the heavenly dragons, with him becoming the victor in the end each time, most likely those dragons will recognize him if he revealed himself. He soon felt a familiar energy that he hasn't felt in a long time coming from within the building, it appears our path will meet sooner than I expected. Inside the conference room the leaders of the three factions turned to look at the intruder. From an orange portal came a tall bespectacled woman with a voluptuous figure. She has tan skin and brown hair tied into a bun with headset and she has blue-gray eyes, she wore an extremely low-cut dress and it had a high slit which exposed portions of her breast, in her hand was a staff with a hook-like end. She soon spooked aimed towards the leader of the devil faction, well if it isn't the unworthy devil kings, Mr. Zex and little Miss Seraphal, and oh look the backstabbing bitch, Graphia, she said the silver-haired maid's name with venom. Explain yourself, what are you doing here? Ordered a beautiful girl with long black hair tied into a twin tails and violet eyes, she has a childlike body even due having large assets, she wore a green business dress, this girl was Seraphal Leviathan, one of the four great satans and the one in charge of foreign affairs. Kateria Leviathan, descendant of the first Leviathan, said a handsome and young man who looks in his twenties, he has shoulder-length crimson red hair and blue-green eyes, he wore a military shirt with white pants and a cape held together by a red jewel pin, this man is Sears X Lucifer, ruler of the underworld and one of the four great satans. Beside him was a beautiful ivory-skinned woman appearing in her early twenties. With silver hair and matching eyes, her hair, which flows all the way down to her back, features a long braid on each side with small blue bows at the end, while the rest is let down, ending in twin braids, she wore a blue and white French maid outfit with long sleeves and white maid headband over her head, with red lipstick, this woman is Graphia Lucifuge, traitor of the old Satan faction and maid of Sears X Lucifer along with his family. I am here to bring destruction and chaos, along with exacting vengeance on you too, the other two devil kings and the traitor. She raised her staff and focused her energy into it and releasing a powerful blast in the room. Outside the coatman watched as the room exploded from Kateria's attack. You may ask how no one is noticing him since his apparel will stick him out like a sore thumb. Well quite simple, the coat was made using the Tumesian fox ability to concealing itself from trackers, by luck he was able to find one in the familiar forest while it was asleep and absorb a small part of its power and infuse it into the hooded coat, making it artificial sacred gear, however it had one downside which is when he makes himself known it takes 5 minutes to hide his presence again. He watched as the Seersex had help from the leaders of the Gregorian Heaven factions, adorable the three great powers put up a defensive barrier together, adorable and pathetic, she said mocking the three who are in the sphere. Guess they had grown slightly weaker in this time of false peace, having focused on politics and ignoring training to keep their strength and power in top form, the three faction leaders are not as powerful as they once were, the man thought as he sighed in annoyance. What are you thinking Kateria? Seersex asked with authority laced in his words. 
What I am thinking is the complete opposite of what everyone at this disgusting meeting, if God and the devil kings aren't around anymore, then there should be a revolution in this world, said the woman hopping to place some sense into them. Kateria stop this right now, what are you trying Toto? said the one with the title of Leviathan. Seraphal you stole my Leviathan title and questioned me. How dare you? Kateria glared at the black pigtailed girl with hate. She soon calmed down and collected her thoughts, oh don't worry darling once I kill you today, I will simply take back the name of the devil king Leviathan for myself, after that, her eyes moved to the silver haired maid, I will kill a certain traitor and the other three who took the devil king's titles, who were the cause of my precious beloved to die that day many years ago, she said, while Grafia unnoticed by everyone shivered at recalling that day. Of course I suppose it's too much to hope, for just caught up in a devil's coup d'etat, said a tall man appearing in his twenties with an average build, black hair, golden bangs and black goatee. He wore a red open chest coat with high collar and multiple black belts located on his arms, stomach and ankles, he wore a pair of grey pants along with a pair of brown dress shoes, this was Azazel the governor general of the fallen angels. I think it's more than that, her plan is most likely to take over the whole world, said a calm voice analyzing the whole situation, this came from a handsome looking man with long blonde hair and green eyes, he wore regal clothing with a gold shoulder and neck like armor connected to a peach cape and two straps of white with golden edge, on top of his head was a halo made of light, this man is Michael leader of the angels and seraphs. Oh Michael nailed it, she said now holding her staff with both hands, no one wants a world where God and the devil king's death are covered up, so since you have clearly failed, we will take this decaying realm and reform it for ourselves instead, said the leviathan descendant, however Azazel began to laugh at what she has said which was annoying her and the one on the roof, Azazel, what do you find so amusing? Decaying? Reform? How cliche, come on you have to know the first villains to die always says crap like that, said the fallen angel leader, this angered the cloaked man up on the roof. It'll teach you to mock me. Kateria soon got into her fighting stance and an orange aura cloaked her body. Oh, you will, will you? Sounds like fun, Azazel said as he was shrouded in a yellow aura and walked forward to fight his opponent. Kateria you have no intention of backing down, said the red-haired devil king. Not at all Sirzex, raising the pink part of her shirt to get comfortable, don't get me wrong you were a good devil king, but you won't have that or any other title much longer, unfortunately, only thing you will have is a gravestone with your and the other three names written on it, she said as she got up in the air. Doubtful, shall we then, the one with the title of Lucifer looked down letting his comrade face the woman before them, a barrier soon formed around him and the others so they wouldn't get caught in the crossfire. A descendant of the former devil king, Leviathan, a desperate monster nearing her end, not a bad opponent, said the twelve-winged fallen angel, I think I'll treat myself to some Armageddon. Surprise, you don't scare me, Kateria said wanting to beat the smug out of his face, the two began to raise their powers to an unnatural level, the level of an ultimate class being, all of the magicians near the two were soon killed by the sheer power they released. Time to see how much you have grown, Taria Chan, thought the man as he watched the two fight. Old school building who is that? Look with Azazel, said Rias, as she and Issei headed to the window to look at the sky above the school building, from a distance was an orange and yellow aura shaped of human silhouettes that were made of their power, what's she doing here? Who is she? asked Issei not knowing the mysterious woman. Kateria Leviathan, you known when the four devil kings were killed in the war, they were replaced by devils that earned instead of inherited those titles, right? she said while Kateria was sending black with orange outlined dragons made of energy towards Azazel, the man evaded them all as it was nothing while blocking one with his personal magic circle. Yeah, that how your older brother and Sona's older sister became devil kings, said Issei, while Kateria created three magic circles to attack Azazel from above, swirling together to form a larger form of her attack. Through the long years of fighting, the devils were almost completely decimated, if the new devil kings hadn't ended the war when they did, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but the direct descendants of the former devil kings still retaliated, they declared themselves to be the rightful successors, but after they lost and were chased to the farthest ends of hell, said Rias teaching her pawn about the dark devil history. For real? said Issei, while in the fight Azazel blocked the attack again with his personal magic circle. Kateria was part of the resistance, she is the descendant of the Leviathan family. However, Rias looked at the woman for a bit longer, the one who served her was even more feared than her or the other devil king descendants, able to decimate an entire army of high class devils from different members of the remaining 72 pillars even when the four current devil kings individually fought him in single combat they always lost, only when they fought together did they win, but it was only barely did they attain victory. Wait there was someone who could match the four devil kings power while tag teaming? asked a shocked Issei, he knew that the four devil kings were powerful, 
but for someone to make them have a difficult time fighting while working together, that was a scary thought. Yes, they say he was possibly on par with the fourth strongest being in the world. If you believe the rumors, with a stronger control and mastery over ice than Seraphal Sama or Grafia Ne San. His mastery over the sword, most specifically the Nodaichi was unmatched. He was stronger, faster and able to sense enemies from a massive distance. Regenerate wounds almost like a phoenix, also extremely intelligent, able to outsmart Beelzebub Sama, however they decided to erase all information regarding him, the only thing they left of him was the moniker he attained, that is forever engraved in devil history, Hell's Dire Wolf, said Rias while Issei shivered, if the guy was still alive he may not come out of their confrontation alive, and for an unknown reason he felt Diedrich shiver, did he know who the guy could be? Rias stood a while longer looking at the fight outside the building, she hopped to find Gasper and free everyone from their time paralysis, and hopefully attain peace between the factions. Top of the new school building the hooded man continued to watch as the magicians began to unleash hell on the barrier holding the three leaders of the Judeo-Christian faction. But it was pointless since even with all of them combined they won't be able to make a dent on the thing. His hidden eyes looked at the silver-haired maid who was analyzing the gate, soon a boy and two girls joined the fray eliminating magician that were in the area close to the barrier, the boy has short blonde hair, gray eyes and a mole under his left eye, he wore a short-sleeved white shirt with black ribbon on the collar matching black pants and brown dress shoes, in his hand was a long sword with no guards with gold linings and emitting both holy and demonic auras. However it was the girls that got his attention, one is a beautiful young woman in her teens with long chestnut hair and violet eyes, her hair was tied into twin tails. Each held with a blue scrunchie, she wore a black latex bodysuit. Black gloves that passes her elbow, black combat boots with black latex stockings reaching her thighs. In her hand was a katana that soon took form of steel wires. Fighting alongside her was a young woman with chin-length blue hair with a dyed green fringe on the right side and yellow eyes. She wore a white long-sleeved button-down shirt with vertical lining, a black ribbon on the collar, black button-down corset and a magenta shirt with white accents, in her hand was a uniquely shaped broadsword with a blue blade and a golden edge, the sword has a semicircular guard on the left side of the handle that extends to the bottom just above the pommel, with a small extension on the right side of the handle, standing from the tip of the blade, the sword was slightly taller than her. Well who knew that those two will be here, haven't seen them in a long time since we crossed path in Transylvania, thought the man as he watched the kids show their skills in swordsmanship, I can see that they had improved with their sword skills, but they are still not in my league, he watched as the two girls also showed great teamwork greater than the first time they met. Are you as exited of your final moments as I am? She soon released an energy that was surrounding her body, however the energy had an appearance similar to that of a snake. The cloaked man however can feel something off with it, even do her power gained an extra boost, he sensed that it was affecting the woman, making her control over her demonic power slowly plummet to non-existent. Kateria released a massive blast towards Azazel, however he was able to dodge it, we should clear something up before moving forward, said the governor general, she soon went to land him a solid blow but he blocked it by matching her current power, you've got a lot of aura, seem to be more than a devil king's descendant should possess, where did you get this power? asked the man curious of the recent power up. I would love to answer that question, but why waste so much breath when you were going to die? she shouted as a massive blast occurred between them, but it simply made them have some space between each other. Here have a gift. The man released a swarm of light attacks towards the leviathan descendant, however she blocked them all with her shield. The man soon watched as the boosted gear wielder arrived with his king and fellow peerage members. They began to eliminate mages until they could stop the teleportation gate that was in the sky. Apparently the one who wields the forbidden Belorview decided to in a sense man up, and was able to remove the time bubble in the surrounding area and those affected by it, along with cancelling the gate, well done Lil Dampier, you may make your predecessors proud after all. As he watched the cross-dressing boy fall due to exhaustion, soon everyone began to attack eliminating any remaining magicians. Well then, why don't we start getting serious here, I am so bored right now, are you, said the fallen angel leader as he pulled out a lance like golden dagger with a purple jewel at the end of the handle. What are you holding, asked the woman curious of what he has up his sleeves. Something much more interesting than war, call it my hobby, this is the downfall dragon spear and artificial sacred gear developed by yours truly said the man as he raised the dagger and a purple light began to emit from the jewel, balance break, said Azazel as he was engulfed in a golden sphere of light, that soon disappeared revealing a golden dragon armor with purple jewels that covers the wielder's body, armor of the fallen dragon, down fall dragon another armor. So he is a fellow sacred gear creator, and here I thought me and little bro were the only ones, he thought in slight annoyance, since the guy was an angel and worked alongside god before his death, 
it was bound to happen sooner or later. Now come here, said the armored fallen angel using the universal hand motion for bring it. It'll kill you, shouted Kateria with rage in her voice, the soon clashed however Azazel proved to be the fastest and strongest of the two, destroying not only her staff but along with portion of her clothing revealing her left breast, an open wound let loose a small amount of blood, he also caused her to let her hair down, which the cloaked man found more appealing. Ha ha ha, he said in being the one to injure her, Kateria enraged soon let her arms extend and let a swarm of tentacle arms grabs hold of the fallen angel's left arm, this may be due to that odd power up, I am not necessarily needed for the creation of our new world, if I can take out one of the three great powers, then I welcome death, ill destroy myself for not only glory, but to be with my beloved, shouted a more demonized Kateria. Destroy yourself? Hey I don't want to mock your hopes and dreams, but it doesn't seem worth it. The golden armored leader cut of his left arm with the two forked trident, making Kateria wide open for an attack, you will still die, he said as he threw the spear towards her. Time for my debut to the world, thought the cloaked man, as he vanished was going to reintroduce himself to the world. Kateria P, O, V, as the spear headed towards me, my life flashed before my very eyes, the time I had with my family before their death during the great war by the hand of angels, the time I trained to grow stronger to reclaim my rightful place as the true leviathan, and finally the time I spent with my beloved silver eye and haired knight. That was the greatest time I ever had, he gave me strength when I was weak, comfort when I felt sad and save when I was hurt, he was always there for me, he was my first friend, my sanctuary and my first love, and he even declined to serve the master of his household only to be by her side. If I had to relieve my life again, it would be only to tell him how much I loved him, I would have forgotten all of this for him, for I didn't need some title to be happy, he was my source of happiness. But he is dead and soon so shall I, closing my eyes I accepted my coming demise, a lone tear fell from my face, I will see you soon, my love. However the pain never came, back to third person P, O, V. Kateria soon opened her eyes to see a black hooded coat figure stand before her, the spear aiming for her life was encased in ice and soon shattered, he turned to look at me however it was hard to tell since his entire face was covered by his hood, w who are you? she asked as she felt weakened due to force cancelling her self destruction spell. The man didn't answer as he moved his right arm to her forehead, soon she was engulfed in the mons light green aura, it felt like he was being cleansed from the taint of using that power, her wounds along with her clothing were repaired however her hair was still kept loose, how? All in due time, his voice was alluring and some reason very familiar. Hey booty, the cloaked man turned to the one-armed fallen angel general, he sealed the wound to stop the blood loss, on his hand was a purple orb which was all that is left of his sacred gear, do you know what you done? Of course I did, I saved a beautiful woman from being skewered by your attack, he said in cocky tone, however the leviathan descendant blushed for some unknown reason. I see, by the small aura radiating from you I can tell that you are a devil, however I can feel that it's very well suppressed, and can't even tell from which household you are from, you must have trained your aura to the point of perfect control, since no low class devil could stop my attack so easily, said the man, soon the others finished with their opponents and joined close to where the fallen angel governor was, they all were now staring at the hooded man. Yeah nearly 600 years of training does that, said the mystery man. But that leads to our biggest question, who are you? asked Sirzex looking at the cloaked man, I know you Aaron from the underworld, your ability in ice and cloaking would have been known years ago. The man chuckled, you are right I am not from the underworld, well I haven't been there since the final clash of the devil civil war. And judging by your actions, you were a part of the old satan faction, said the one holding the title of Lucifer, his power of destruction began to radiate from him. The hooded man began Toto a mocking clap, bravo you do have a brain in that hollow head of yours and here I thought you were only a man child who abuses his position as devil king to make his sister happy, he said making everyone raise a brow minus the two older female devils, and Kateria who was giggling since she was enjoying this. I have never abused my position as Lucifer, shouted the man in anger. The man scoffed at that, could have fooled me, but your action speaks a lot louder. Zex, giving the girl anything she wanted, even a young Nekosho who was on death row. Belonging to the race you along with the other three devil kings ordered to be eliminated without giving a reason to the Yukai faction. Using your position to give your sister partial ownership of a territory belonging to another devil heiress. Letting a boy with a longinus sealed inside him enter the academy even when he failed the entrance exam. Having your sister have a chance to break a contract formed between two houses under the use of ancient devil's law, the most sacred law to all devils that was made by the 72 pillars and the first devil kings ordering your queen to give the said boy a seal to reach the Fenix manor during the wedding recital, using him as a loophole to cancel wedding that was won fairly by Razor Fenix, if that is not abuse of power, 
I don't know what is. Sears X was now being looked behind by his fellow faction leaders. The show of favoritism and abuse of his position as the leader of the underworld made Michael and Azazel ashamed of him dirtying their brother's name. Seraphal was still mad of him ordering her to give his sister partial ownership of her sister's territory, while a young girl with short white hair and amber eyes looked at the floor in remembering her near-death experience. Issei looked at the Devil King and thanked him for being able to meet Rias. But I have to say that the reason for the Nekoshis extinction was very shallow, said the hooded man. How was it shallow? She killed her king, to protect her sister, Sirzex said but was interrupted by the hooded man. W what? said the young Nekosho, the hooded man looked, which was hard to tell by not being able to see his face, at the young girl, you didn't know? Your sister killed her king for the sake of protecting you, he was going to use you on an experiment for him to gain the ability of both chakra and senjutsu, even if it meant your death in the aftermath. That is a lie, no proof of such thing was found in his home, if there was we would have known, said the ruler of the underworld. The man soon pulled a rusty leather book out of his cloak. This little book contains all of the notes written by Kuroka's former king. I attained it when I investigate this for the Yukai faction after the genocide of the Nekosho, hunting the Mons Peerage I found it in the possession of his queen, it also told on how the Devil Council has funded his experiment for them to attain Yukai abilities, all for the sake of being the superior race, this show how weak their leaders are on handling such a complicated situation, now in his and the other Devil King's hands are covered in the blood of innocent. Everyone present felt disgust for the Devil Council, while Sears X and Seraphal felt ashamed for causing an unnecessary genocide. However, the young Nekosho felt rage and regret, rage for the devils for being the cause of her almost death and the death of her entire race, while regret for hating her sister for protecting her. Kuroka, nay, I am so sorry. Tears began to fall from the side of her. But we still don't know who you are, asked the Gremory headmaid, putting everyone back on track. The cloaked man stared at the woman, no one noticed, but he was controlling his killing intent from showing, you were right. I got so into this little revelation I forgot to introduce myself, forgive me for my ill manner. The man brought his hands up to his hood and pulled it down. All of the older devils gasped at the sight of his face, his appearance was that of a young and handsome man who appears to be in his early twenties, he has fair, slightly pale skin, swept back bright silver hair and glowing silver eyes, my name is Naruto Lucifuge, Hell's direwolf and head of the Lucifuge household. I it can't be, said Seraphal looking at the man above her, she remembered how he defeated three whole battalion in less than five minutes, and the sight of him covered in the blood of his enemy. Sears X was shaking since he recalled every time he fought against him in the battlefield, how he always ended up frozen, with various amounts of cuts and with a small amount of soldiers alive, h how. Graphia was looking at him with tears falling from her eyes, she felt her past regrets and guilt come back with much vigor, how the silver-haired female regretted her actions of her younger years, and because of it became emotionless and strict, be brother. M my love, said Kateria in shock, a part of her knew he would still be alive but she never found a body so it was hard to be sure if he was truly alive. He turned to her and gave her a loving smile, I am back Kate Chan, sorry it took so long to be back by your side, his piercing silver eyes soon focused on the group below him most specifically the three older devils of the bunch, his face went to an emotionless mask, what's wrong? Looks like you have seen a ghost. The house of Lucifuge a proud house from the extra demon fractions of the underworld, they were the house of Lucifer's servants along with being their personal bodyguards and sometimes in rare occasions lovers, they are known for their silver hair and eyes along with their strong affinity towards ice magic, and their creative minds to make plans on the spot or ahead of time. However after the great war between the three fractions this once proud house was reduced to three surviving members, Euclid, Graphia and Naruto Lucifuge, childrens of the strongest Lucifuge of her time Sequoia Lucifuge, an. She looks like Sequoia Izayoi from Toho Project, and unknown father. The three siblings grew stronger under the guidance of the Rizavum Levon Lucifer. The head of the Lucifer household, he trained the three siblings to be one of his strongest soldiers, bodyguards. Euclid has great amount of demonic reserves and also a brilliant mind able to recreate sacred gears if he had the proper material, however, he lacked the Lucifuge ability over ice but amended that with his skill in teleportation magic. Graphia also has great amount of demonic reserves but had gained their household affinity to ice magic but unlike Euclid she didn't have that creative spark to create items like her little brother. Then there was their eldest sibling Naruto, he was a prodigy down to the letter. Along with a hard worker to improve his abilities and skills. The boy was smart, scary smart, having an IQ of 140 at a young age which is still growing and a creativity that surpasses his brother. With supernatural level senses that can surpass those of any tracking class familiar. A regenerative healing factor that could in the future possibly rival that of a phoenix reflex that can dodge any attack without even looking and predict their next strike, 
an abnormally strong physical body which he worked to the bone to achieve and maintain, a talent towards the art of the sword, more specifically the nodaichi, a Japanese long sword, an immense demonic reserve that his sibling couldn't match, and the strongest affinity towards ice magic ever recorded among any lucifuge. Euclid idolized his older brother, wanting to be his equal and be as powerful and skilled as him, hoping to one day fight alongside him in the battlefield. Graphia also idolized him, he was also the best example of a man she would want to be with, a devil who was kind, honest, strong, caring and humble. However there was one thing that made him different from his sibling, even to those of the deceased Lucifuge, he declined to serve Rizabum, never in the history of their house has a member declined in serving a Lucifer, however the young man did but still served a Mao, and that Mao was his childhood friend and crush, Kateria Leviathan, the young woman didn't mind having him as her servant, for she also has a crush for the Lucifuge heir. Soon the civil war between the devils began in the underworld between the anti-Satan and old Satan factions. And it began because the younger generation wanted to stop fighting with the angels and fallen angel factions, somewhere during the midpoint of the civil war. Graphia betrayed her faction by siding with the enemy, all because of a crush towards Sears ex Grammary the heir to the house of Grammary, and promising her that her siblings will be pardoned for their action during the war, so she became a mole for the anti-Satan faction. With the intel she provided the anti-Satans were able to counter all the old Satan's attacks and destroy many of their bases and supplies. They soon rallied up their forces and headed to the last of the old Satan base, and their plans was to attack from two different directions at the same time, while the heirs of the house of Cetri, Gremory, Astaroth and Glacial Labalus faced against the descendants of the four Satans, the army of devils sided with the anti-Satan will face Naruto in an open field miles away from the base, with Graphia leading them. In the battlefield Naruto Lucifuge, head of the house of Lucifuge stood ten yards in front of the full might of the anti-Satan army leading them was his sister Graphia Lucifuge. He was wearing a long, silver-buttoned navy blue high-collar coat with three separate coattails and white interior. Underneath the coat was a tight black sleeveless vest that revealed his well-toned chest. Arms and shoulder, he wears a white fingerless gloves, dark blue pants with two black belts crisscrossing each other and a pair of black boots, in his hand held in a reverse grip was his personal weapon ice fang, the handle had a white braid, with a blue rayskin, the collar and end cap were both silver in color, branded on the end cap was the kanji for ice, the guard was circular with the design of a dragon in it, and a silver blade with a small curve near the point of the blade. Graphia was wearing a black button-up shirt with white lining and her belly button exposed with a white combat skirt. Black stockings and blue high-heeled shoes, around her neck was a red scarf, her hair was in a ponytail held by her own braided hair, strapped to her left side was her rapier arctic thorn, it was a dark blue handle guard with silver engraving, silver knuckle guard, blue handle, silver circular pommel, with a silver blade with a blue fuller. An. Looks like a gemtail rapier from lineage 2. Why did you betray his sister? He said in an emotionless tone while releasing killing intent, the pain of betrayal by his own flesh and blood hurt him greatly, many devils who were opposing him could feel his killing intent, most of them stood their grounds but had sweat forming on their brow, the rest were trembling in fear and praying out loud to God for mercy, everyone around them getting a headache for this. You have to understand brother, if we continue this meaningless war with both the angel and fallen angel faction, the devil race will be extinct, for our race to survive we must try to life in peace with the other factions said Graphia standing before her brother. The silver-haired man scoffed, peace, peace is a lie. A word used to give others a false dream, goal and reason. For there can never be peace if those who are filled with greed exist. There can never be peace if those who lust for power and bloodshed exist. Never can there be peace, peace will never be reached if conflict exists in all living beings, that is why peace is nothing but a word with empty promises, that gives us a false a future that can never truly be realized, thus the reason that action, he spin the sword around with the blade facing forward, along with slicing the ground, will always speak louder than words of any kind. Naruto soon got to his Teiurigasumi stance and unfolded his bat like wings. Play bodies by drowning pool, all of the devils in the anti-Satan army got ready for the fight of their lives. Some got a hold of their weapons, others got ready to fight up close personal and the distant fighters getting ready to send their spells at the single foe before them. Half of them went up into the air for they are better in aerial combat, Graphia got ready with drawing her sword, however she knew that this was not going to be like the training she had with him, for he was not going to hold back, they better finish their part of the plan, thought Graphia hopping they arrive before the army is completely obliterated. On a silent signal the silver-haired male charged at the army. The magic users sent barrages of various elements hopping to injure the man. However Naruto waltzed through the oncoming as if they were nothing and took him into the air. He began to hack and slice enemies left and right with the sword that was in his right hand. 
arms, legs, heads, wings, upper and lower bodies fell from the sky as blood painted the ground below. The silver-eyed man soon began to fly at supersonic speed to evade a barrage homing spells. He did various aerial maneuvers to evade or lose the spells aimed at him. Naruto getting enough of the game cat and mouse shot some bolts of ice hitting some of the oncoming attacks creating a large cloud of smoke, but Ten came out of the smoke and didn't give him time to evade. The devils felt their morals rising as they hit the strongest warrior of the old Satan faction. But that ended as numerous spikes of light blue energy came out of the smoke hitting those not fast enough and be encased in ice. Those in the air soon fell and shattered into pieces when they crashed into the ground. The cloud of smoke dispersed revealing Naruto with his coat damaged from the attacks and a few scratches on his face. The scratches began to heal leaving behind smooth skin. His eyes looked at the coat given to him by Kataria as a gift. This was a my favorite coat, the male lucifuge said as he dodged a power of destruction beam, still enraged to what happened to his coat he infused his ice energy into the blade, arctic field. He shouted throwing his nodaichi at the devil bellow who provoked him. Everyone get out of there, shouted Grafia as she recognized that attack, it was something he was working on and said it was still not ready, but she forgot how he always try new attacks on the fields to see where he can improve. The target was unable to dodge the incoming attack and was impaled in the chest, but when the blade touched the ground a massive omnidirectional blast of ice shot from where it impacted, freezing the ground and any devil in a 50 mile radius and a 10 miles in the air, and impaling those in the edge of the blast radius with ice spikes. Time to go up close and personal, Naruto said as he dived to the ground forces, he soon punched a devil into the ground creating a massive crater, the devil head he punched was turned to mush. Shooting out of the crater he kicks the nearest devil in the chest breaking his ribcage and launching him to the devils behind him. He soon began to punch, elbow, knee and kick enemies that came close to him. Breaking bone and causing internal injuries by each strike he made. He evaded a spear from impaling him, grabbed hold of the spear and threw the devil into the sky. The silver-haired male twirled the spear around hitting his enemies in the temple, neck and cheek, before he stabbed the spear in the ground causing the devil he sent into the sky to be impaled by it, out of the corner of his eye he saw a wind attack coming his way but from what he could see it was meant to send him flying not harm him taking the blast head on it launched him towards where his sword was located. Naruto twirled in the air and landed on the back of his sword. His right foot on the handle while his left landed on the blade, the sword began to skid and slice the icy ground from catching its wielders decent, thankfully Naruto infused demonic energy upon landing to harden the sword to not break from impact, when the blade stopped the silver-eyed swordsman brushed the dust off his shoulders and looked towards the horizon to see the army flying over the spike to fight him in the icy terrain. Focusing energy into his hand he shouted freezing wave. Releasing a massive wave of ice towards them, the Fenexes and fire users combined their attacks to counter the oncoming wave. The two opposing elements met and the flaming devils struggled to keep the powerful assault at bay. Soon the entire field was surrounded in mist making it hard for any of them to see, but they saw before them a large wall of ice with some flames trapped inside. Getting off his sword and going into a Sha no Kame he focused demonic energy into the sword. Hell slash. He released the demonic energy beam slashing through the ice and towards the opposing army. Those in the front were unable to react fast enough and were sliced or obliterated by the focused demonic aura, while those behind them again created shields to protect themselves, some however went down to the floor a few lost an arm or a leg, others went up into the air, when the wave ended 10 platoons were battle ready, 15 platoons were injured and about 30 platoons were either dead or close to dying. Grafia looked all the fallen soldiers who faced her brother's onslaught, she knew her brother was a force to be reckoned with, but this proves her that the tales the soldiers told before was true, he was beast in the battlefield freezing and slicing his enemies who crosses his path, only leaving a few survivors behind to spread his tale. End of song everyone retreat, I will hold him off as long as I can, she said drawing her sword, no one said anything since they feared to face the man, they all created a magic circle and teleported back to their base, a few took those severely injured with them, now it's just you and me, she said getting into her stance. Naruto rolled his shoulder and looked at Grafia, the two siblings clashed in the arctic wasteland of his making. Grafia struggled against her brother's ferocious yet precise swordplay, unlike when they are training she noticed he was faster, stronger and doesn't leave many opening for her to counter him. Their swords soon got to a standstill with the ice beneath them cracking. So where are those four who leads this revolt? Asked Naruto pushing his sister down to one knee, I would expect them to be here leading this army in a suicidal attempt to. Naruto's eyes soon widened and looked towards the base as it soon exploded. He kicked Grafia away and focused on the now burning castle. Naruto focused on Kateria's energy and found her not being in the castle but somewhere near the border of the deepest part of hell. He sighed in relief of her being fine. Seconds later, Sirzex, Seraphal, Ajuka, and Falbium appeared in front of him, 
They all had their clothes damaged most likely from the struggle they had with his leaders. All four of them looked at the icy field seeing statues of former allies and limbs, they all felt horrible for not being able to help them. Naruto then snapped them of their guilt, impressive, getting my attention focused on the army while you face the remaining forces, something I want allow to happen again. Naruto, Sears X growled as his power of destruction flared around him. Don't start acting all high and mighty gremory, the silver-haired man pointed his sword to him, you knew the moment you started this little rebellion the devils were going to die, their death was caused from your actions and choice, so if you want to blame someone blame yourself. Naruto looked around to see the four including Grafia surrounding him all ready to face him, let's dance. Kankara formula. Chemistry. Plasma bolts. Shouted Ajuka shooting bolts of plasma towards Naruto. The silver-haired man used his sword to slice, redirect or evade the bolts. His senses felt one of them coming from his left and soon encased his hand in demonic aura to stop Sears X power of destruction encased fist. Once more his instinct kicked in and used his nodaichi to block his sister's sword from the other direction. He began to fight with both of his opponents at the same time, Sears X using some kicks and punches only to be evaded or blocked by the man, along with close calls of losing a limb but getting some cuts by Grafia Rapier by Naruto setting it up to protect himself, while Grafia tried to stab and slice her brother only for him to block them or making them change course, she gained a few bruises from Sears X caused Naruto evasions thus receiving the blows instead. Ice Pillars Shouted Seraphal creating a row of pillars headed towards the male Lucifuge. Naruto kicked Sears X in the chest, then with his free hand grabbed Grafia and threw her to a frozen devil breaking it on impact. He then made a sword beam to cancel out the oncoming pillars, Naruto jumped towards Seraphal with sword aimed to impale her, but he was soon hit by something launching away from his target, Naruto looked towards Falbium who had his hand up, forgot that the glacial labelas are user of invisible energy, that is going to be a pain, the silver haired man spit a glob of blood. Naruto soon rushed at Falbium, the bald headed man began to shoot burst of invisible energy towards the oncoming target, however Naruto began to use his sensory ability to see where the attacks were coming from, when he reached the man he kicked him in the jaw making him fly towards Ajuka who was going to cast another spell, he rushed towards Seraphal and punched her in the solar plexus, then added a palm strike with demonic energy to send her flying. Sears X soon got him by surprise and punched his nodaichi in the pommel up into the air. The two men began to fight in close quarters as the sword flipped in the air. Sears X sent a punch to Naruto's temple, but was caught by the male Lucifuge. Who used it to push the Gremory in and elbow strike him in the ribcage, he followed it up by going into a judo stance to slam Sears X into the ground. Naruto encased all his hands and feet in ice and caught his nodaichi and went to slash the redhead in half, only for Grafia to stop his blade with her rapier, however his glowing silver eyes saw that she showed the same level of concern he has towards Kataria, to Sears X. So that is why, he said releasing the pressure towards his sister's sword, she soon went to clash again with her brother, then went into a deadlock, you're infatuated with him, aren't you? The widen of her eyes was all Naruto needed to see that he hit the nail on the head, that's why you betrayed us, cause you got a crush for this man? Naruto was now encased in light blue aura making the ground shake by his anger and his wings expanded showing his rage, you backstabbed your allies, your lord, even your own family, for a single man. Who was your enemy? Naruto shouted as he punched Grafia in the gut making her struggle for air, for your betrayal I will make you watch as I kill him, he said walking towards Sears X. Please brother, I love him, she said weakly as her brother stood above Sears X, his sword went up into air ready to slice the restrained opponent, no. She shouted as she shot a fast beam of ice towards her brother. Naruto reacted at the last second due to his anger clouding him lessening his reaction time, the attack struck him covered his right arm and wing in a very thick layer of ice, as he was about to break the icy covering his arm and wing, Falbium used this chance to handicap him, invisible precision blast. The usable attack hit its mark, Naruto watched as his sword, right arm and wing break into ice shards. A-A-A-G-G-G-G-H-H-H-H he shouted as blood came from his wound, Naruto gritted his teeth and stopped the blood flow by coating the stump wing and arm in a layer of ice. Sears X soon broke free from his binding and joined the others to finish the job, he recalled the promise he made to the female Lucifuge, but he could let someone like Naruto live, I am sorry Grafia-san, but it has to be done, thought the Gremory heir. While he thought this Grafia looked in shock at her brother's severe wound which she has made possible to happen. Her mind snapped out as she heard her love interest shout and his friends getting up and soon joining in, destruction bomb. Sears X shouted throwing a small black and red sphere hitting Naruto square in the chest making him fly towards Falbium, invisible chains. Shouted the glacial labela's air as chains wrapped itself tightly around Naruto restraining his movement, 
Fulbium soon lifted Naruto up into the air and went to slam him into the ground, ice impalers. Shouted Seraphal as spikes of ice appeared where Naruto was going to slam impaling him in the shoulders, stomach, left lung, thighs and Achilles tendons, Kankara formula, physics, bottomless fissure. Ajuka shouted as he punched the ground and a chasm began to form beneath the impaled opponent and began to fall. Naruto. Grafia shouted as she shot off into the chasm. Tears began to fall from her face as she felt immense regret from what she has done, she went to grab his remaining hand to save him, as she was getting closer to catching him their fingers met, this was enough for her to feel a from a short burst of ice making her stop her pursuit, her eyes locked with that of her brothers, his eyes showing pain, betrayal and untold anger, these weren't the eyes she always received from him full of love, but what he said next broke her heart to dust. You are no sister of mine. Those were his last words as he continued to fall and vanished into the darkness, leaving behind a broken woman due to her action. Present time H how are you alive? Asked Sirzex scared of the man, and how did you regain your right arm? Naruto looked at his right arm, opening and closing his hand, then stared the man with cold emotionless eyes, why should I tell you anything? You are not my lord or master, and I don't listen to weak rulers. Be brother, Grafia said in a low voice, but he heard it and glared at her, his power skyrocketed surrounding him in a light blue aura. The earth began to shake, the sky darkened both within along with outside the barrier and finally the temperature dropped as ice began to form in all the windows around Kuo along with covering trees with a layer of it. T this power, thought all the young devils trembling in fear, the power he was putting out was something they never thought would be possible. He has gotten stronger, thought Sirzex and Seraphal as sweat began to form in their brow, they knew that Naruto was powerful, but this power was greater than a superclass devil. Man this kid will be a pain, thought the fallen angel governor, this man was possibly the strongest person in the area. H he is stronger than father, thought a trembling Michael, the last time he felt this sort of power was when God faced the four original satans. Kataria however was blushing and feeling very aroused, she always liked a man who was stronger than her, and Naruto was showing he was showing he has it in spades, and the white dragon empress wasn't that far off as well. So you are smitten with the male lucifuge, a good mate to have, could have done worse, spoke the being within the divine dividing, Albion the vanishing dragon, but something about that man was familiar, but he can't put his claws on it. No kidding this man is the one I had been searching for, she kept her lust at bay as she wanted to know him first, then she will jump him and make him hers. But remembers Valeria that he is stronger and older than you so he will dominate you, said the dragon to the user of his power. If he dominates me by my heritage I would accept it, as long as I can have a piece of him thought the Valeria to her partner. If you forgot, Grafia, I no longer see you as of the sister I once loved and cherished, Naruto held his glare at her, Grafia flinched at his words, you are nothing more than a woman who share the same blood as me and my only sibling, Euclid, unable to hold the pain anymore Grafia fell to her knees and cried. H hey, Issei said trembling to stand making Naruto focus on him, T that is not H how a brother S should treat H his sister. Naruto raised his brow, he partially respected the boy for standing up to him knowing he would die cause of it. But that is all the respect he will give, due to some inside information the boy was one of things he wished to eradicate, a pervert, you know nothing child, she betrayed me, family and faction for him, the silver haired man pointed at Sirzex, a man who she barely knew, and used her affection to his advantage when his side was losing the civil war, so I ask you sister, he said that word with enough venom in it, did your betrayal to us worth it? Grafia stayed quiet about it as tears continued to fall, was it worth it her betrayal, she wanted to say yes, but the truth is that it wasn't, she was seen as a possible threat by the elders due to her connection to the old satan faction, many devils respected her sure, but she knew that those were just facades, and she had her heart broken by the man who was the cause of everything, she recalled what happened after the coronation for the new mouths. Flashback the underworld was celebrating for the coronation of the new devil leaders. All devils who fought for the anti-satans and remaining members of the 72 pillars went to the throne room of the old lucifer castle. Grafia stood to the side and watched as the devil elders stood before Sirzex, Seraphal, Ajuka and Falbium. They each were seated in a throne with the symbol of the old Satan leaders, soon the leader of the elders, Zekram Bael first head of the house of Bael, stood before them. For your leadership, bringing an end to the civil war and sending those of the old Satan to the deepest part of the underworld. By the power vested in us we grant you all the title of Mao, Falbium Glacia Labulas as of today you gained the title of Asmodeus. Ajuka Astaroth you have earned the title of Beelzebub, Seraphal Citri we grant you the title of Leviathan, and finally for Sears X Gremory we grant you the title of Lucifer, wear these names with pride and lead us all into a bright future, the Zekram turned to look at the large crowd of devils, all hail Falbium Asmodeus, all hail Ajuka Beelzebub, all hail Seraphal Leviathan.
All hail Sears ex Lucifer. The crowd soon shouted in joy at the coronation of their new leaders. The four new mouths were soon greeted by their parents and household members, showing how proud they were of them to achieve such great honor. Graphia walked through the swarm of devils and headed to Sears X. Okay, Graphia, you can do this, just tell him how you feel, she thought to herself, feeling nervous as she got closer to the man she had a crush on, but that then reality came crashing down on her. There before her was Sears X kissing a woman in front of everyone, she had short honey brown hair and green eyes. She wore a yellow dress that reached her ankles. This woman was Anastasia Bathan, the sole surviving member of the near extinct House of Bathan. Congratulations, my love, she said after separating from the kiss. Thanks, dear, Sears X said as he initiated the kiss. Graphia, having heard this, left the throne room and went to her sleeping quarters and jumped onto her bed. Tears began to fall from her face as her heart broke from the man she had a crush on loved another woman. For hours, she cried until she fell asleep with tears staining her cheeks. End of flashback After that Graphia still following the custom of her house decided to be his servant, and became his bishop, while his wife became queen, it pained her to see the man she crushed on being with another woman, even more when they had a son, which she wanted to have with him, but decided to become the sister figure to Sears ex sister and son, thus shutting away all of her emotions and being a faithful servant. By your silence I can see it wasn't, he said looking at his sister with her head down, but now I have other matters to attend to. Naruto vanished and appeared above Azazel and Axe kicked him to the ground like teach a perverted crow to not mess with those I swore to protect and love. Azazel got out of the crater and coughed up the clouds of dust got into his lungs, he soon groaned from the headache, man this feels worse than my hangover when I drank 98% proof alcohol, his eyes focusing back on the silver haired man, and his speed is far superior than a nightpiece, I fear no one unless they are the top 5 powerful beings could make him fight serious. Naruto turned to the user of the divine dividing, so are you going to fight the pervert? Or stay there and watch? Valeria soon looked at her rival, no I will fight him, and also I want to show that I will not be siding with them. So you are showing your true stripes huh, Valeria, said Azazel now out of the crater. Sorry arrow Azazel but being bad is so much more fun, and I want to see how powerful my rival truly is, she said looking down at those of the alliance. The man soon stood beside Issei, I will be careful with her, she has more experience using her sacred gear than you, so don't take her lightly, the brown haired boy nodded taking the fallen angel leader's word to heart. Before we fight I would like to fully introduce myself, I am Valeria Lucifer, descendant of Lucifer himself, she said shocking all the devils below, she soon manifested eight devil wings the sign of those who have Lucifer blood in them. Azazel soon sat of a rock piece belonging to the demolished school, thus the reason why she will forever know as the strongest user of the divine dividing, surpassing those of the past, present and soon to be future. Well I will not interfere with the fight between you and the pervert, he said and looked at the young female Gremory, and to keep others out of the fight, I have a few people wanting to take a few pounds of flesh from a certain Gramary heiress in her group. Naruto soon snapped his finger and created three icy blue magic circle, soon three women appeared before them. The one on the left was an attractive young woman with violet eyes having a slender body. She had long silky black hair down to her hips, her clothing consisting of black, strap-like objects around and under her breasts, a thong-like piece held around her hips by three thin straps, gloves that ran right up her arms with small lengths of chains hanging from them shoulder guard like objects on her shoulders with three large spikes sprouting from her right shoulder, and black thigh high heel boots. The one on the right was a tall and buxom woman with long, navy blue hair that obscured her right eye and brown eyes, her attire consisted of a maroon, trench coat like top with a wide collar, a matching miniskirt, and black heeled shoes, the trench coat top was open at her chest, giving view to her breasts and cleavage, she also wore a gold necklace around her neck, she appears to wear a white shirt underneath her top, but it can only be seen from the bottom. The last one in the center was a girl with blonde hair styled into twin tails and blue eyes, she wore a gothic lolita attire, which consisted of a black lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow on the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar, white thigh high socks, and black shoes, she also wore a large black bow on top of her hair. The young teens gasped at who appeared at the lucifuge command, I am possible, shouted Rias looking at the females who appeared from the summoning circle. Issei was trembling at the woman who stood at the left, Ra Rainer. There before everyone was Rainer, Middleton and Kalawarner, the three rogue fallen angels who were working for Kokabiel, to extract the sacred gear of Asia and kill Issei cause of his boosted gear, you all must be wondering how they are still alive. The silver haired man amused at the shocked faces of the young devils, the fallen angel he summoned were also amused at the sight. Yes we are. We saw them turn to a pile of feather, it should be impossible to revive something that has been obliterated into nothingness, shouted the Gramary heiress. The power of destruction was absolute anything that comes in contact with this destructive energy, 
is obliterated there was a small chance of survival if you were powerful than the caster, but for a one-winged fallen angel to survive was a massive blow to the pride of having this power. Grafia looked at her brother, his speed was beyond normal but it couldn't allow him to pull out a fake death, Naruto's presence would have be sense even if suppressed, seconds later she gasped in realization, you learned it. Naruto looked at Grafia, yes I learned and mastered our mother's prized technique, the one that gave her the moniker Silent Death and Silver-Eyed Slasher, the freeze time the mark that you are a true master of ice magic, said the head Lucifuge then turned to the three women he summoned. Rainer, Kalawarner, Middle take care of the two devil heiresses and their peerage along with the exorcist, me and Kateria will handle their leaders, he said out loud but soon did a magic link to their heads, but spare the white-haired and amber-eyed Nekosho, she is not to be heavily wounded. Hi, Naruto-sama, the three unfolded their wings to reveal that all three of them were now three set fallen angels, they all dived down to face their almost killers, Rias and Peerage along with Sona and Tsubaki got ready to fight against the stronger fallen angel. Issei was going to head towards his to help friends them fend off against an old enemy, but Valeria soon appeared before him and kicked him away, your fight is with me, and I will not be ignored just because you want to save your pathetic friends, she said going back in the air, Issei growled in anger as he entered Balance Breaker, thus the two heavenly dragons fight once more against each other. Naruto and Kateria got down to stand before Michael, Seraphal, Azazel, Sirzex and Grafia, his cloak dispersed into black mist revealing a no-sleeved black vest and a black leather glove reaching his shoulder on his right arm with what appears to chain surrounding it, now let us all fight elsewhere, don't want to jump into or interrupt the others fights now do we? Naruto created a large magic circle teleporting them to the old school building, time to set the stage, soon another barrier formed around them, now who do you wish to fight Kateria Chan? The Leviathan descendant looked at Grafia and Seraphal, I want to face those two women over there. Very well, oh, before I forget, he pulled out a tooth being held by a silver chain, one, this belongs to you an ancient artifact and heirloom of your house, found it during my travel, it will unlock the powers that only your ancestor had access to, and recognize you as the one true leviathan heir. Kateria looked at the tooth and felt nostalgia, once she put the necklace around her neck she felt like a missing half has finally returned home, an aura of blue and yellow shot out from her before it resided back into her body, her eyes were now full of determination and confident on facing the two women before her, this will be fun. Naruto soon focused on Michael, Sirzex and Azazel. Well gentlemen while the ladies do their fight, we should probably start ours. He raised his right hand and a light blue orb emerged, Naruto squeezed at the orb took a more sword like shape, the lucifuge did a quick swing to remove the energy layer covering it, there in his hand was a nodaichi with a blade being 7 shaku, 87, 5 inches, long being with a 22, 5 inches handle, 9, 16 feet long total from the blade tip to the pommel, the guard along with the ray skin is black, the braid was white and finally the pommel is silver, too. Everyone felt the ominous energy that radiated from the blade once it was brought to the world, but the three leaders of the angel, fallen angel and devil faction had it worse, the mere closeness to the sword sent a message of death coming to them. Gentlemen Mitoshi, the tool of your soon to be end, said the male lucifuge. Well that is quite a sword you have there, never seen it before, and by how much malice it radiates I expected it to be known, said Azazel sweating at the feeling he was getting from it, the thing was emitting more evil than any of the demonic sword he came across. Naruto smiled and held the sword up, yeah she is a piece of beauty. It took seven days and nights to forge her, and six months to find the last component to complete her. Thankfully I had help making it from the legendary blacksmith. Muramasa Sengo, the three leaders knew that man so did many in the supernatural world. He was the first and only human to forge a sword that can match a demonic sword, it gained the ability like the other swords he makes, and the ability of a monster blood it consumed during a blood moon, but that is enough talk, he said getting to his sword stance, it's time to make myself known to the world once more, he said unnoticed by the three rulers his pupil turned to a slit for a second before turning back to normal. The two heavenly dragon wielders began to crash above the school, Issei was throwing sloppy punches towards his opponent, but Valeria was faster able to evade them, on the punch aimed to her head she jumped above it and sent an axe kick to him, sending the red armored team to the ground, is that the best you got rival, you still lack the knowledge and power to wield Diedrig properly, and that's an awful shame, she said in an insulting tone. Gur I had it, Ascalon, shouted Issei as a blade extended from his left gauntlet. A dragon slayer? Where'd you find such a dangerous toy? The descendant of Lucifer said dodging the attack by going under it, but it's no use if the wielder doesn't know how to use it, or able to hit its mark, sending an uppercut to her rival. Issei stumbled from the powerful blow, she's strong, if I take a few more hits like that I am done for. You are pathetic, to think that you are my rival, you aren't even worth using my juggernaut drive, 
she shouted as she raised her hand and a yellow pulse erupted from her palm, divide. Ria's pawn soon fell on one knee, Gah, my power, what did you do? He said panting in exhaustion, boost. Once more he felt energized. Friend, my rival's ability is to have his opponent's strength, the opposite of my ability which double it to the previous level, but his other ability is the real problem, said the Welsh dragon from within the gauntlet, he can add the power he's stolen to his own, however there is a limit to how much he can take, by expelling the power from those wings of light when he's over capacity, he can maintain strength. So you're saying Shell stay at full power the whole time, she got no weaknesses, but, Issei soon charged at his rival, nothing she can do if I make her eat my fist. Valeria sighed in annoyance, this was not the kind of fight she wanted with her supposed rival, you truly are an idiot who resorts to blind charging, instead of using his sacred gear and dragon slayer, like pearls before swine, she soon fired a barrage of energy bolts at Issei. Issei lifted his arms to block most of the attacks, arg, no time for defense against her, one of her bolts hit his helmet shattering it to pieces leaving only the side pieces, ill focus all I've got in this one hit. Boost shouted his sacred gear as he sent a punch to the white armored girl is that all you got she said blocking the punch well cause you kept dodging the sword but i thought you might just take the punch diedrig transfer power to the stored ascalon shouted isei very well responded sealed dragon transfer the left gauntlet was soon surrounded in a golden hue valeria was caught off guard as the punch destroyed her helmet her hair flowed around and leaving behind the side pieces of the helmet Issei sent another punch hitting her chest plate making her armor burst with a few fragments scattered across the ground. Not bad but not enough, she said as her scale mail came back covering her body. Man she can recreate her armor in an instant, the boy gritted his teeth, looking down on the floor he sees a blue sphere that belonged to his rival armor. Hey, Diedrich, my sacred gear responds and evolves to my will right? He said while picking up the sphere. Friend you can't be thinking, said Diedrich with his partner soon responding oh, but I am said the boy lifting his right gauntlet that lost an orb on the top of the palm, fuhahaha, amusing, but it may kill you are you prepared for that? Dying is easy, but I gotta stay alive long enough to take the president's virginity, I can take any sort of pain if it means surpassing that bitch over there, Issei said adjusting the orb into the gauntlet, well said, I am as ready as you are. Issei began to slowly feel a pain on his right arm, if Kiba managed the impossible by fusing holiness with devil power so it'll take your lost power and add it to my own sacred gear. But his pain tolerance soon broke when the pain was too much, ah. This pain. Those light spears are like splinters compared to this. Oh my trying to take something from others, now that is just plain rude, she said crossing her arms, covered by her helmet she was doing a fake pout. Diedrich as we are diametrically opposed this amount to suicide, said the Albion from within the sacred gear. Albion. I've learned one this since meeting this vessel, Issei Hyodo that a dedicated fool can make the impossible possible. I am fine being a fool. If I can't win with my brains, I'll bet it all on a dumb move like this. Now answer my will. He shouted with much vigor in his voice. Soon the gauntlet on his right turned white with a blue orb on the top of the palm and elbow. He he he. Guess he'll call it dividing gear. Unthinkable. Utterly unthinkable. Shouted Albion from within the sacred gear. He he he. Was the sound that caught the attention of Albion, Diedrag and Issei. They all looked at Valeria's body began to tremble as she hugged herself, he 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 ha 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 ha. Now things are getting interesting, she said with bloodlust rolling off her body let's have a fight to remember Issei Hyodo. With that as her battle cry she charged at her rival. Rias group, Sona and Subaki, Irina vs Rainair group. Rainair, Warner and Midelp dived down to their opponents, all three had a sadistic glint in their eyes to bring those devils pain, the devils soon divided into three groups, Rias, Akino, Asia and Gasper became one team, Kiba, Xenovia and Kaneko became the second team, and the last three being Irina, Sona and Subaki. Middle you take on the one with the pretty boy, Kalawarner the sea tree heiress, the gremory bitch is mine, said Rainair as the three divided and went to their respected target. Rias group versus Rainair Rainair now floated above the gremory heiress and her group, I can't wait to hear you scream, she said creating a dark red thorn like spear, I had awaited some time to have my revenge on you and your peerage. Not gonna happen, Gasper. Rias shouted as Gasper began to use his sacred gear, however Rainair vanished and hit the back of the boy head, soon creating some red chains keeping him in the ground, the young Dampir cried in pain from being in contact with the light, she did the same thing to Asia to eliminate their medical help. Now don't be rude, using such a powerful sacred gear on the start is no fun, said Rainair in a tone a mother uses to scold her child. Rias angered by her attacker's taunt and harming a member of her peerage, I will destroy you. 
she screamed as a multiple energy orbs of red-black energy shot towards the fallen angel. Rainair vanished and reappeared dodging the girl's attack, when she stopped she was soon struck by lightning from above creating a small cloud of smoke. Era, Era, you should pay more attention to your surroundings, said Akano as her sadistic nature was raising. However that was soon dropped when the smoke cleared revealing an unharmed Rainair with a bolt of lighting in her hand, wh what? said a shocked Akano. You really think that I will not grow stronger since we last faced? Naruto-sama trained me and the others in the art of magic and combat, making us stronger than what our own leaders couldn't do in such a small amount of time, said Rainair looking at her opponents, so don't think you were superior because you won our last fight. She threw the lightning bolt at the ground between the two of the devils, Rias and Akano soon shot up into the air to avoid the explosion of the attack, Rainair soon shot up to face the two bitches head on. Rias and Akano began to evade the thorn light spear, however unlike their resident knight their speed wasn't good enough to leave them unharmed, they had a few cuts and a bit of their clothes torn, the two devils can now see how outmatched they are now to the fallen angel woman. Sona's group versus Kalawarner Kalawarner shot spears of light to the sea trees group, Irina turned her katana into a shield to block the incoming attack aimed at her, Tsubaki soon stood in front of Sona and created a full body mirror, Mirror Alice. The spears hit the mirror only for them to be shot back to the fallen angel, Kalawarner scowled at her attacks being sent back her, with a swipe of her arm the spears dispersed into sparks of light. So that is Mirror Alice the mirror of recollection, now I see why Master said it's a powerful sacred gear if used correctly, said the busty fallen angel, her eyes saw the girl a bit exhausted from using it just one time, but a sacred gear can only be as strong as its user, she soon created two light sword and went towards the girls, Tsubaki soon summoned a Naginata, while Irina turned her shield back into a katana. Tsubaki did a overhead slash while Irina did a diagonal slash, however they were blocked by the light shaped weapons, the girls clashed between each other, Tsubaki and Irina struggling against the strong opponent before them, Kalawarner soon pushed the two girls to the side as she shot up into the air to dodge four drills of water. So the sea tree heiress is one to fight while the enemy's back is turned and distracted, you shame your house name little girl, said Kalawarner angering Sona for being called a coward. A fight can be either directly or from a distance, I know my limitations in close quarter combat, that is why I prefer to fight from afar, Sona said looking at her opponent while adjusting her glasses. Kalawarner smirked as she got back into a fighting stance, Tsubaki and Irina got ready to face her up close while Sona covered them, starting their fight once more. Kiba's group vs Midelt. Ha ha ha, laughed Midelt as she shot volleys of light knives at her target, Kiba and Xenovia were avoiding the oncoming attack with their speed, however gaining a few small cuts, decreasing their speed slowly, Kaneko tore a chunk of earth from the ground and used it as a makeshift shield, come on little devils. Dance for me. We can't be on the defense forever shouted Xenovia in annoyance, they may be fast, but they could still get tired from the constant dodging, and the light properties of those arrows were making matters worse. You're right so let's go offense, said Kiba as he soon created a black sword with a gold handle, he began to strike the light arrows as they were being devoured, Xenovia soon joined in by using the flat side of her sword as a bat or slicing the attacks, and the young Nekomata threw the chunk of earth at her. Middle soon created long bladed light dagger and cut the boulder in half, the one on her right was held in a reverse grip, now that we are all warmed up, let's fight. She soon went up close and personal, Kiba and Xenovia began to fight with the lowly fallen angel, and to their surprise that she was keeping up with them, the two knights soon got into a lock with the light dagger, the lowly soon slid it away from the deadlock as the incoming fist hit the ground she used to be, Midelt soon made distance with the three, she giggled at how enjoyable it is to fight someone who isn't as strong as her Naruto-sama, it was relaxing and better than getting hurt. Ready or not here I come. She rushed back at them with the evil smile fueled with bloodlust. Seraphal and Grafia vs Kateria. Seraphal and Grafia stood before the now empowered Kateria, the two looked at each other before nodding, ice blast ice shards. The two shouted as a beam of ice and ice shards shot towards the leviathan descendant. Kateria focused her energy to her surroundings and water began to appear around her to form a water dome, the dome was soon turned to ice from the cold temperature, but it was soon destroyed as the ice melted back into water and creating a ring around Kateria. Since when can you use water magic? Seraphal said since she never saw her opponent use that during the war. You really believe that I will tell you. You are more immature than I believed, face the fury of the sea, shark rush. Kateria shouted as a wave of water headed towards her enemies, the wave soon took the appearance of sharks of various kinds rushing towards them, Seraphal and Grafia shot up into the air to avoid the ravages creatures, oh no you're not crack and strike. From the water surface multiple tentacles of different sizes shot up into the air to attack the two powerful devils. 
Graphia and Seraphal began to fly around avoiding the water tentacles aiming to either impale them or grab them. One of them caught Seraphal's ankle applying a lot of pressure causing the bone to break. The female Lucifuge shot a large ball of ice freezing the water before shattering it with a strong kick. Seraphal looked thankful for the save however winced at the pain she feels in her ankle. This is going to be difficult, she has gotten stronger than when she was facing Azazel Sama. Grafia's silver eyes looked at the shattered ice turning back into water and surrounded the Leviathan descendant, before she focused on the necklace around her enemy's neck, and I believe it has Toto with that necklace. Are you two coming down? Asked Kateria looking at the two, if not then I will come to you. She shot up into the sky with the water following behind her, take this corruption tornado. Soon a vortexes of vermilion energy shot out from her magic circle, Graphia and Seraphal created shields to protect them from the attack however it torn through it like it was nothing, their clothing was shredded but still covering their decency. Kateria smiled at the power of her ancestor which was now in her command, Naru-kun will truly have a nice present once we are done here, her blue-gray eyes looked at the two women. Let's see how long you two last, Vermilion energy soon shot out towards the two as they dodged the attack. Faction leaders versus Naruto Azazel, Michael and Sirzex got ready to face the hardest battle of their lives. Azazel soon created a sword using light, while Michael created a broadsword using holy flames and Sirzex created a spear of his power of destruction. The red-haired man looked at his fellow leaders, be ready who knows how powerful and skilled he has become since he was gone for 600 years. No kidding, Azazel said with his sword resting on his shoulder. If things got worse he will have to use downfall dragon spear again, and that will possibly give him a slightly better chance of survival. Yes we must act with caution, said the angel leader calmly, but he was actually keeping his fear in check, something about this man felt familiar, but he couldn't put his finger on it. I know you are all planning on how to face me, Naruto disappeared from their sights, it took a lesson for the three leaders to find him, their vision focused upward where he was diving down to the center of where they stood, but I have little patience today. The three men jumped back from the impact, what they was a small patch of ice surrounding where the sword impaled with large spikes sprouting from the edge, however the ice was dark red almost as if was made from blood, and so cold the three faction leaders could see their breath. Well that's new, said Sears X never seeing red ice before, hell no such color ice was ever recorded before, he soon lifted his spear to stop the nodaichi from cleaning his head off, however he soon felt multiple cuts occurring all over his body, he ascends into the sky to see cuts on his clothing and his skin, itch how did you? He asked in shock, he wasn't able to see anything slicing him, this spelled bad new for him, his skill in the sword has surpassed those of a master swordsman. Naruto smirked at the shocked face of his opponent, now why should I tell you my secret? Also, he created two ice walls behind him stopping the two light swords from slicing him, did you forget who you were fighting with? He said coldly as a sense of death washed over the three again, the eldest lucifuge felt insulted that they believed that he wouldn't sense them coming behind him. The male lucifuge turned towards the two angelic leaders shot his free arm forward. The wall soon shot out spikes to impale the two leaders. He was able to injure Michael in the right shoulder and graze his thigh. But Azazel got out in time, Naruto soon went to decapitate the heaven leader but a light spear from Azazel stopped his advancement, using his only hand he punched the man away from his brother, when they backed away to a safe distance Azazel and Michael soon began to fire a barrage of light weapon at Naruto while Sears X launched destructive energy bolts at him as well, when they were done Naruto was surrounded in a cloud of smoke. Once the smoke disappeared it revealed a disturbing sight, their opponent while still standing was riddled with holes from the legs up, his right arm was on the floor with the chain broken lying on the ground, his left cheek was torn open, his head was tilted down to show his brain and bits of his skull to the world. A pool of blood surrounded the male lucifuge, even with everything he still held the sword with his left hand. Guess he couldn't handle that assault, said Azazel he felt a bit green at the sight, it was way to executioner style for his liking. May he rest in peace, the archangel said doing his prayer to his dead enemy, he may have been his enemy but he didn't deserve such a horrible death. The red haired demon lord closed his eyes and paid his respects, soon turning to his fellow faction leaders, let's go back to the other they need our hell, he he he. Sirzex was saying as he heard a sinister chuckle. The three turned to look at the supposed to be dead lucifuge, his body was trembling as his chuckle turned into a full out laughter, he he ha 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 ha. Naruto lifted his head to show an insane smile, it was even more frightening with piece of his cheek missing exposing his teeth, all three of them noticed how they turned into rows of razor sharp fangs, similar to that you see in a shark, only his upper and lower canine teeth being longer, oh but we are only getting started you fuckers. His silver eyes starting to turn blood red, the blood around him started to move back towards his body while his arms dissipated into a cloud of black smoke. Soon all the damage done to his clothes and body was repaired as if it was never happened, and his right arm came back regrown from darkness itself, there was also a white symbol on the top of his palm. 
the symbol on Alucard's glove from Helsing. H how in nine circles of hell did you do that? shouted Sirzex in disbelief, no devil was able to heal from a light assault of that magnitude combined with the Bale's power of destruction, not even the Phoenix would be able to heal from that, and that level of regenerative healing was never recorded within his household before, or that which he was capable of. Fuck you that's how, a man can't reveal all of his tricks to the audience, however, Naruto's eyes turned to look at Michael who was trembling, he could hear the angel's heartbeat getting faster by the second, along with being able to smell the fear coming off of him, it was quite divine, golden boy over there may already know, damn angels ruining my fun, he said as he pouted in mock annoyance. Sirzex and Azazel looked at the heaven leader, well brother, cared to share with the rest of the class? asked the Grigori leader. Michael sighed and looked at the ground, the year was 41 AD. The Roman ruler Caligula or Gaius Julius Caesar, one, was sentenced to death. As you all know his early acts as rulers were generous. Such as recalling people who were exiled, however. Following an illness in 37 AD, he turned into one of history's most tyrannical rulers. Killing or exiling those he saw as a threat, even close family members. He spread a rumor that his mother had been born as a result of incest. And during a financial crisis in 39 AD he began falsely accusing people of crimes and killing them in order to obtain their estates. He forced parents to watch their children's executions. Forced people to build temples to worship him and enjoy dining while watching his victims be sought alive. He was assassinated under the order of the Senate being tired of his tyrannical rule. However he didn't stay dead, out of his own free will and a spite towards the gods he consumed the blood from one of the assassins he was able to kill. Turning himself into a different branch of vampire. A true vampire as he call himself, from that he decided to forsaken his old name and attain a new one. A name to be feared and remembered for eternity, Alucard, said Michael shivering as he recalled a shadowy male figure with red eyes, his power was far more superior than those of any Shinso or Elder Vampires, having abilities that no other vampire could use or imitate, one of those was the same regenerative ability our opponent just showed us. Wait hold up, Azazel said stopping Michael, if that is true about this Alucard being such a powerful vampire, then why is he not known or his name used for the male ruling faction of the vampires? And finally how do you know all of this? asked the fallen angel, this is the first time he heard of such a vampire, if such a man existed all supernatural being would be in the know. Because I had faced him once, a few years after his ascensions. We received a message that a village was being destroyed by a vampire. We sent a group of exorcists to deal with it expecting it was a fledgling. But they never returned, soon me and a small group of angels went to investigate what happened. There we found a man with black hair, blood red eyes and a black roman armor with a red cape. We knew he was a vampire as he was draining the blood from one of the exorcists we sent. We attacked him without a second thought, we believed he was dead due to his wound, but we were wrong, six eight winged angels were butchered and consumed by that monstrosity, while I was spared on a whim to be a witness of his rising to being the no life king, said Michael to his fallen brother, his tone was bitter recalling the death of his kin, he recalls the shadow figure of Alucard as he bites down onto their throats, draining them of their essence. When I confronted the Nosferatu, too, coven who ruled at the time before it was destroyed and the Teps and Carmilla factions took over. They were ashamed to hear that such a man be related to them. A being fueled with by his hunger for blood, battle and pleasure. Not caring to expose their race who had stayed hidden from man since the rise of Babylon. After hearing on how he and those he sired ravaged many villages. Towns and cities, the Nosferatu coven not wanting this to continue voted to exterminate his bloodline. For two years we hunted them down until only Alucard was left. But he was too powerful to be killed by any normal means, so it was decided he had to be locked away forever, so they asked the Greco-Roman deities and God himself to seal him in special cell within Tartarus, never to see the light of day, and his name along with any memory of him were forever erased from the world, said Michael. The angel's green eyes soon looked at Naruto's blood-red ones, and that raises the question, how did you get into his cell? There is no way to go there and it was sealed off. Naruto smirked showing rows of teeth, oh all I can say is you can blame the four mouths for that. He said pointing at Sirzex, but beyond that I will say no more, for why should I tell anything to a possible dead man, the blade edge of his nodaichi turned from silver to violet red, unknown to the three leaders, Naruto felt his blade vibrate in anticipation, and Toshi is quite hungry since it hasn't tasted angel, fallen angel or devil blood for quite a while, and you three being the strongest of your race will make her quite happy, as he was about to charge he stopped himself. Ah how rude of me, I still have to bring them back over to my side, Naruto said with a small smile while confusing the three leaders, raising his free hand in a snapping position with demonic energy coming of his fingers, release, as he snapped the echo of the snapped was heard all over the school. 
Outside of the barrier surrounding the Maos as Irina and Xenovia were fighting their respected opponents, no one noticed the quick appearance of a luminescent red ring appeared in the edge of their iris. The young women soon fell on their knees as an extremely strong headache came to them. Irina, Xenovia, shouted Kiba and Sona at the same time to their down comrade. As the girls were on their knees, memories began to surface, memories they knew about but have forgotten for the sake of their safety, and it started on a mission to exterminate a vampire attacking the favela in Brazil. Memories start. We find both Irina and Xenovia being chained to the wall in a private room within an abandoned warehouse. Their clothing had a few slashes and exposing bits of their flesh. Their target stood before them with a lustful gaze in his eyes. The target was a man with short frizzy black hair, amber eyes with a slit pupil, wearing black shirt with a teal trench coat over it and blue jeans along with black boots. The two young exorcists were mad for being captured by their target. They had come to Brazil to eliminate a single vampire, which the priest of the area informed the Vatican about. The Vatican believed it was just a simple low class or fledgling vampire, sent them to deal with it, but it turned out their target was a vampire who was turned 380 years ago, otherwise known as a mid class vampire or master vampire, and with a small army of 40 ghouls and 80 loyal fledglings, outnumbered they were soon incapacitated and captured, leading them to this. I gotta hand it to those bastardos Vatican's porcos, he looked at their bodies, Irina shivered at being stared in such a way, while Zenobia glared at the man, they sure know how to wrap un presente well. Let us go you foul fiend, Zenovia growled trying to act strong for the both of them. Ahaha Garodina, he said while covering her mouth and squeezing it with a bit of force, not enough to break her bones of course, you have no power here, I have your vitas in the palm of my mouths, he checked her body out and licked his lips, along with your well-defined corpos, he said letting go of her face and began groping along with fondling her left breast. Zenovia suppressed a moan from coming out of her mouth, instead shouted at the molester, don't you dare touch me. She screamed with a small blush on her cheek, the sensation of someone touching her breast in such a way was odd for her, however she also felt disgust for him touching her in such a way. The man laughed as he stopped his sexual assault on her, ha ha ha, I forgot you exorcistas aren't very open to lustful urges, must be one hell of a aborismentos for the rapazes to see such sexy bodies walking around, the master vampire then smiled with a sickening grin, but that means I can have you two all to myself, I will break you mind, body and soul, and make you only want my cock and semen both inside and all over your bodies, ha 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 ha. Irina and Zenovia shivered in fear at the thought of being raped by this foul creature, this was why so few women were exorcist, many supernatural targets they hunt rape them until they are driven by their lustful urges, the rare few who evaded this fate were recorded as the strongest who pushed their bodies to the limit. The master vampire walked up to Irina, and I will start with you, in a swift movement his claws torn the top of her attire, without slicing her skin, exposing her C-cup breast and pink nipple to the cold air of the room. Nnn no, the vampire's hand went to her sacred place while his mouth neared her nipple, when the warm breath of his mouth made contact with her nipple she screamed no. As if divine intervention and explosion occurred outside the room building, this kills the mood angering the vampire for the intrusion, he soon went to the monitor on the left wall, the church wasn't supposed to send any reinforcements so soon, for these two putas? He said in a low tone finishing with animalistic growl, but due to how small the room was, his captive heard what he has said which confused them. The two wondered how he knew no fellow exorcist would come to their help, they told the priest to call the Vatican for help if they errant back within two hour, so there should be some hope for rescue. Their thought ended as they heard their capture growl in frustration, everyone get ready to shoot the idiota who come through those doors, he said through the intercom. Irina and Zenovia heard the fledglings mobilize behind the door to the room, they weren't sure how long the silence lasted until the sound of multiple gunfire was heard. When it ended they heard one of the fledglings speak through a walkie, my master I think we got the intruder. The master vampire frowned, I don't want an I think I want a confirmado kill on this idiota, he shouted to his underlings. Understood my mast. What in the world? The sound of something slashing was heard in the background along with the sound of blood splattering, shoot it. Shoot that all. Case shish asterisk the radio went static, the three in the private room listened as gunshot was fired, the two females felt a mix of emotion being hope and fear. Soon the door was sliced multiple times and fell to the floor. There standing before them was a silver-haired man wearing a black muscle shirt under a blue coat with black pant and boots, in his hand was a nodaichi with the blood of his enemies still on the blade, he had a orange tint sunglasses, similar to Agent Smith from Matrix. Sorry it took so long to come here, but I had an annoying welcoming committee to eliminate before arriving. Damn you! He growled as the master vampire fangs began to elongate, he received a major blow to his forces by losing all of his fledglings and ghouls, it will take a while to find an appropriate replacement to fill in the ranks. I will feast on your fucking sangue and place your head on my wall. Chuckle see that would be intimidating if you were, 
well intimidating, said the man lowering his glasses to reveal his glowing silver eyes, for you have nothing to back you up, thus you are nothing compared to me and those with true power. After he was mocked by the blue coat man he threw all of his cards at him in a single strike, the intruder disappeared in a burst of pure speed, the master vampire then created a blade of energy and blocked the blade aiming to slice him in half, the two men began to fight with their swords constantly blocking each other and never getting the upper hand, when the master vampire tried to do an overhead slash, the silver-eyed man blocked it, who are you? You are no exorcista since I don't sense any holy power on you, so why are you helping these two cadellas? The name is Naruto, I didn't came here for them, that is just a coincidence. What I came for I to absorb your power, the silver-haired man said as his eyes turned blood red with a slit pupil. Naruto put more force on his sword and destroyed the energy sword, he then encased the vampire's lower body in ice, and then in a swift motion sliced his arms off with his sword, his free hand grabbed the mon's head and pulling it up to expose his neck, the master vampire soon looked in fear as rows of razor sharp teeth was visible in the mon's mouth, in a swift movement he bites down on the neck and blood exploded around the two. Xenovia and Irina looked in fear as the man drained all the blood of their target, in a matter of seconds he was done and all that remained was a dried carcass that soon crumbled to dust, the man now confirmed to be a vampire pulled out a small tissue and wiped his mouth from the remaining blood, it's always so bloody when I feed, once he finished he turned to the two exorcist on the wall. The two trembled in fear as he closed in on them, closing their eyes not wanting to face the same fate as the master vampire, however they didn't expect to hear chains being sliced and falling to the ground, the two juniors exorcist opened their eyes to see the with his back turned, there on the floor was two cloaks, put those on. Not wasting a second they put it on, Irina then turned to their savior, T thanks for saving us Mr. Vampire, she said with a small smile, the man returned a smile getting a small blush from both of them. Don't mention it, as I said before it was complete coincidence that you were here, I was after that man for some time now, said Naruto as he sealed Toshi away. Nevertheless we are forever in your debt, even if you were a vampire, said Xenovia, now we have to find out why we didn't get any help. Simple, the two girls looked at the silver haired man, your informant betrayed you. The two looked at him with rage at accusing a fellow member of the church, that a lie, members of the church want. Irina was stopped by the silver-haired man raising his hand. What I said is the truth, when I drain the blood of my targets I gain their memories, he and the priest were in it together, and this wasn't the first time, the vampire who I consumed has done this type of thing for 100 years, the two girls gasped at the horrifying revelation, many of the priests he had help from agreed willingly, all in a similar manner saying that God would forgive them after doing a good deed. No form of good deed can wipe what they had done, growled Xenovia. Oh really? Naruto raised a brow at the girl's blind belief. Let's start with the most recognized group that believed in such a way. The Knight of Templar, he said walking towards the girl. A group of holy men that under the order of the church went to the Middle East during their crusade. For the sake of regaining the holy land from heretics. He growled recalling when he drained to blood of a vampire who lived during that time. They killed Muslims and Jews out of greed, they wanted power and prestige, jewels and gold that would make them live a life of luxury none of them cared whose blood they shed, let them be children, adults or the elderly, some even fucked women to keep their family safe, only to find out later that they were already dead, all because they all had the Pope's blessing and by decree God himself, but how can they be blessed by someone who is dead? Xenovia and Irina looked in shock at this revelation, that shock soon became anger as they drew their swords and pointed it to his neck, why you are wrong God's not dead, shouted the chestnut haired girl. Naruto sighed in annoyance, if you don't believe me, Ask the priest who abandoned you to become sex toys to the bastard I killed, he turned around and walked towards the door, will you still trust your religion when you find out the truth? Those were his last words as he burst into a swarm of bats. The two exorcists looked at the spot Naruto stood and then at each other, they didn't know what to believe, but they can get answers from the one who had betrayed them. Later at the church, the priest of the church had his back against the wall, fear was present in his eye as he looked at the two enraged exorcists, their respect light swords being mere inches from his neck. All right I want to know everything, if you lie to us, so help me I will drag you to the Vatican to be burned at the stake for treason. Growled Zenovia. Ununderstood, he said with his voice shaking in fear. Were you in league with the vampire who you called the church to eliminate? Asked Irina with a glare in her eyes. Why yes, has he done this before? If so how many, why yes, and H he said about th 300 time, said the man in fear. The two female exorcists felt their rage reach a new height so many of their fellow sisters violated by that fiend, they were glad Naruto killed him to make their souls can rest knowing the man is dead, last question and you better be honest, is God truly dead? The priest looked at the two before he chuckled, so he told you the truth like he has with me, 
The priest looked at the cross with anger. All the angels in heaven lied to us. God our Father died with the four Satans during the Great War. Most of the priest, nuns and exorcists who defected were not because of doing a heinous act, but discovering this secret that all of heaven wished to keep hidden, and what better way than to brand them as traitors. S so God truly is. Irina fell to her knees with tears falling down on her face, while Zenobia lost grip of her sword as she felt conflicted, taking this as a chance to escape the priest rushed to the door, only to stop in his track as he took in a breath of air, he looked down to see a dagger of red ice. Did you really think you could run away? Naruto said as the man fell to the ground as he bled to death from his stomach. Naruto, the male lucifuge looked at the two, from a mere glance he can see how their spirits and believe was broken, now that you know the truth, what will you do with it? The blue-haired girl looked at her partner, and then at the man who saved them earlier that day, what can we do? The church will label us as rouges for knowing the truth, and we can't serve them after knowing how much they lied to us. Well you could work for me, Naruto said getting their attention, I will hypnotize you both, all the memories of today will be forgotten, but every once a month you will send some information to me, once you do you will forget about it and continue on as if it never occurred, thus making you two my spy within the Vatican. Irina and Zenobia felt uncomfortable with that, they had served the church and were firm believers, but this man saved them and showed them how much wrong their order has committed, and with this they could find out who else could have been wronged, we accept. The silver-haired man soon looked at their eyes with his crimson ones, soon the two girls' world turned black and they fell to the ground, till we meet again. Memory end as Kiba and Sona approached their respected ally they soon jumped away to avoid the attack aimed to maim them, but Sona wasn't as fast as Kiba so she gained a small cut on her hand, and Kiba was lucky to avoid a sword beam that would have killed him if he was in its way. With Irina is good to remember everything, said the girl as Warner went down to stand beside her, the two smiled at one another. Good to have you back Irina-san, said the mature fallen angel. Good to be back Kala-chan, said the girl with her Excalibur mimic on hand, the two were looking at the two devils before them, let us finish this to regroup with master, but not kill them, the last thing we need is all of hell chasing us. Agreed, said the fallen angel woman, we can just do that another time. With Xenovia welcome back to the team Xeno-chan said middle with a happy smile master wants to take the white neko show the gothic lolita fallen angel told her through the mental link i see you are as happy as ever said xenovia in a calm expression understood she responded back to her ally she got into her fighting position with durandal her eyes showing complete focus on what she is doing kiba and kaniko glared at xenovia for betraying them and siding with the enemy they questioned however how long has she been one of them back with naruto what did you do asked the blonde archangel Change the field to my favor, by bringing my sleepers back to my side. The vampire devil looked at the three before them, for at the end of the day one of the factions is going to lose a leader. The question is however, who will die first? He said as he licked his lips and then smirked showing his fang, thanks for what being. 